Hi friends, welcome to all. In this video, we are going to solve this packet tracer activity. Configure PAT, that is Port Address Translation. Before coming to this activity, friends, if you like to get any CCNA version 7 online support or any technical support, you can contact our team using our website. Link you will get from the description below. And also, if you like to get this type of technical videos in future, consider subscribing. And don't forget to enable that bell icon so that you will get notification message whenever we upload a new video. Now, coming back to our activity. Here we can see the objectives. Part 1, configure dynamic NAT with overload. Part 2, verify dyna dynamic NAT with overload implementation. Part 3, configure PAT using an interface. Part 4, verify PAT interface implementation. Coming to part 1, configure dynamic NAT with overload. Step 1, configure traffic that will be permitted. On R1, configure one statement for ACL1 to permit any address belonging to 172.16.0.0/16. So we are going to create this uh, standard access list, and we are going to permit this uh, network 172.16.0.0. Coming to our topology, here we can see that network, private network 172.16.0.0 networks. So here we are going to create this access list in this R1. Enable, configure terminal, we will give in short, conf t, and here we will create the access list, 1, and we will permit this network, 172.16.0.0, then we have to give a wildcard mask, I will put a question mark here, so that we can see what is the next wildcard bits, it's 0.0.255, dot 255 step 2 configure a pool of address for NAT configure R1 with a NAT pool that uses the two usable addresses in the 209.165.200.232 slash 30 address space so here we can see that command they given uh, IP NAT then they created this pool any underscore pool underscore name so we can give any name for that then uh, 209.165.200.22 sorry 233 and 234 then we have to specify the net mask so we will give this uh, configuration in this uh, router r1 coming to the configuration in r1 here we will give that ip nat pool here we will create the pool okay i will give uh, my underscore pool then we will give the address i will put a question mark and here we can see uh, we have to specify the start ip address so as they specified it's a 209.165.200.233 then we have to give the end ip address so we can verify that using a question mark uh, give space then question mark then we have to specify end IP address. Just I will copy this address and paste here. Then edit to this uh, 234. Then we have to give the net mask. It's a 255.255.255.252. Step 3. Associate ACL1 with the NAT pool and allow addresses to be reused so here we have to give this command ip nat inside source then specify the list that is one then pool we have to specify the pool uh, we created overload so we will give this command in this r1 we will go to this router r1 and we will give that command here ip nat inside source list one pool then we have to specify our pool name it's uh, my pool my underscore pool we have to give overload
Step 4. Configure the NAT interfaces. Configure R1 interfaces with the appropriate inside and outside NAT commands. So um, here we can see coming this topology. Here we have this interface a serial a 0 slash 1 slash 0 which is connecting to internet and uh, this is um, uh, NAT outside, IP NAT outside and here we can see uh, these two interfaces gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 0 and gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 1 which is connecting to these uh, LANs. They are IP NAT inside. We will give that command in R1. We have to go to those interfaces one by one. Interface serial 0 slash 1 slash 0. And here we will give a IP NAT outside. Now we will go to uh, gigabit interfaces. Interface G0 slash 0 slash 0. This is IP NAT inside. Then we have an interface G0 slash 0 slash 1. IP NAT inside. Now coming to part 2, verify dynamic NAT with overload implementation. Step 1, access services across the internet from the web browser of each of the PCs that use R1 as their gateway. Uh, they are PC1, L1, PC2 and L2. Access the web page for server 1. Where all connections are successful, we will test that. Here we will get the IP address of this uh, server 1 in this internet. We will go to PC1 web browser and paste that IP address here in this URL and click go. And here we can see server 1, we get the web page. We will go to L1 web browser, paste that address, we get the web page. Go to PC2 web browser and here again go. Be able to access the uh, web server. Finally, coming to L2, paste that IP address here, then click go. Perfect. So, uh, we able to access the web page uh, from this uh, server uh, in this internet. So we have seen all connections successful. Coming to step 2, view NAT translations. View the NAT translations on R1. We have to give this command show IP NAT translations. Notice that all four devices were able to communicate and they are using just one address out of the pool. Pat will continue to use the same address until it runs out of port numbers to associate with the translation. Once that occurs, the next address in the pool will be used, while the theoretical limit would be uh, 65536. Since the port number field is a 16-bit number, the device would likely run out of memory before that limit would be reached. Okay, that's fine. So we will give this uh, show IP NAT translations command in R1 so that we can see the translations. End show IP NAT translations and here we can see all the translations here we can see inside the local address the private IP address of all these uh, entity devices here we can see that and this is the port number they used and here we have a inside uh, global right and uh, we can see they used this uh, uh, public IP address to go to the internet and here we have outside local and outside global. Now we will go to part 3 configure PAT using an interface. Step 1 configure traffic that will be permitted. On R2 configure one statement for ACL2 to permit any address belonging to 172.17.0.0 slash 16. Okay, here we are going to create the access list in this router R2 and we have to permit this uh, uh, private networks 172.17.0.0.
we will create this success list 2 uh, in this router R2 enable conf t we will create access list 2 and we are going to permit 172.17.0.0 and here is the wild card mask 0.0.255.255 step 2 associate acl2 with the nat interface and allow address to be reused enter the r2 nat statement to use the interface connected to the internet and provide translations for all internal devices so we have to give this command ip nat inside source list 2 so this is the access list to be created then interface serial 0 slash 1 slash 1 which is connecting to this internet here we can see that yeah um, overload we have to give the command overload we will go to this router r2 and here we will give that command ip nat inside source list 2 interface is a serial uh, 0 slash 1 slash 1 overload step 3 configure the nat interfaces configure r2 interfaces with appropriate inside and outside nat commands so coming to our topology here we can see this interface serial 0 slash 1 slash 1 ip nat outside and here we can see these two interfaces g0 slash 0 slash 0 and g0 slash 0 slash 1 they are in um, inside ip nat inside we will do the configuration we will go to interface serial 0 slash 1 slash 1 and here we will give ip nat outside then we will go to interface uh, g0 slash 0 slash 0 ip nat inside also we have interface g0 slash 0 slash 1 ip nat inside now in part 4 verify path interface implementation step 1 access services across the internet from the web browser of each of the pcs that uses R2 as their gateway. Uh, here we can see those devices PC3, L3, PC4, and L4. Access the web page for server 1. Were all connections successful? Uh, we will check that. Here again, I will uh, copy the IP address of this server 1. Then we will go to uh, each PCs. First of all, we will go to PC3 web browser. And here we can paste that IP address we copied. And here we can see we able to access the web page. Coming to L3. Web browser. Paste that IP address, the IP address of our server. Okay. Then go to PC4. Here also we able to get the web page from the internet. Coming to L4. go perfect yes all connections successful step 2 view nat translations view the nat translations on r2 we can verify that we will go to r2 and we will give the show command give end show ip nat translations and here we can see the translations Inside the local, here we can see uh, the private IP address and uh, this address will not be routed in the uh, internet. Uh, they use this inside the global address, here we can see that address. Also we can see outside the local and outside the global. Step 3. Compare NAT statistics on R1 and R2. Compare the NAT statistics on the two devices. Why doesn't R2 list any dynamic mappings? 
here already we have seen the output in R1 as well as R2 and when we compare mostly we can see the output as same uh, because uh, here one by one we accessed this uh, server right so if you access uh, from the uh, different devices at the same time then you can see this uh, dynamic mapping so just I can say the difference between this uh, uh, dynamic mapping and this uh, path here in this uh, R1 it lists dynamic mapping for the pools of addresses we created right uh, in R2 uh, R2 is only using the outside interface address so that is the address of this interface serial 0 slash 1 slash 1 perfect so here we solved this packet tracer activity configure that and here we can see our completion status it shows 100 percent now dear friends if you have any doubt any suggestions regarding this packet tracer activity uh, you can comment below or you can contact our team using our website a link you will get from the description below and also if you like your video give a thumb and a share with all your friends and uh, if you like to get uh, future videos subscribe our channel stay tuned and we will meet again with the next video thank you